A new report by Wood McKenzie shows that the global energy storage market will triple in 2021. Triple. And likely triple again next year. So what does this mean? What impact will this have on the world? Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Electric Viking. Fantastic to see you. Hope you've had an awesome day. And thank you for supporting the channel. I really appreciate your support. And honestly, the aim for me is that you get more out of this than the time you spend watching the video. So I'll be quick. Thank you for subscribing and liking the videos. If you haven't already, it'd be awesome if you could either join us on Patreon, contribute to the channel, or join up with a channel membership, which will give you videos 24 hours in advance, and will also give you access to hidden videos that no one else but members get to see. Global energy storage deployments will nearly triple in 2021 compared to last year, according to a new report from Wood McKenzie. But more importantly, the research group's Global Energy Storage Outlook says that decarbonisation of the energy sectors in the United States and China will drive the need for a boom in storage deployments, with over one terawatt hours in demand forecast from 2021 to 2030. The US and China will account for more than 70% of that demand, the report found. In July, the Chinese government announced a goal of installing more than 30 gigawatt of new energy storage capacity by 2025 as part of a decarbonisation push. That goal had an outsized impact on Wood McKenzie's front of the meter FTM projects for Asia, said senior research analyst Li Yu in a statement. So what does a Wood McKenzie report actually say? Well, it reflects the key role that storage plays in the electric grid's transition to renewable generation, which I've been harping on about now pretty much all year. This transition will happen much faster than people realize because not only of the grid benefits, for example, the world's largest battery, what was the world's largest battery a couple of years ago and is now minuscule in comparison to the world's largest in Adelaide, Australia, well, it was mocked. It was joked about our, basically our president of our country said it was a joke. Guess what? It paid for itself in 18 months. So what did they do? They went and doubled the size of the battery with the profits. Now, can other countries benefit in the same way? Of course, absolutely they can. Storage projects, including lithium-ion batteries, can help mitigate the intermittency of wind and solar and help deliver power when it is needed. During, say, spikes, for example, when peaker plants are needed and energy prices are astronomical, sometimes up to a thousand times more than they cost in lower demand periods. And that is when these battery storage deployment plants can make literally tens of millions of dollars in a very short period of time. The Biden administration, as part of its campaign to decarbonize the grid by 2035, has worked to boost the storage industry, putting market incentives and research and development efforts behind the technology. Of particular importance is the existing investment tax credit, TTC, for storage paired with solar applications. The credit has supercharged Demand, the report found, resulting in 4.5 times increase in annual FDM deployments for 2021. Tax language for the budget reconciliation bill passed by the House Ways and Means Committee would extend the ITC for standalone storage projects, a move that the Biden administration has also proposed that would provide upside to the Wood McKenzie's latest 10 year outlook, the report said. Basically, the Biden administration and a lot of different states with their own governors are driving the adoption of these big battery projects. In fact, America leads the world in massive battery storage deployments projects that are planned over the next decade. They have enormous ones coming online. In second place, surprisingly, actually is Australia at this point. As it stands, the US and Canada are poised to deploy 15 gigawatt hours of annual capacity in 2021, up from just four gigawatt hours in 2020. Over the next five years, though, increasingly diverse state markets will lead to more storage investments, especially in Texas, New York, 
and the PJM interconnection region eventually building to a cumulative capacity over 400 gigawatt hours by 2030. Now, I think this report is completely wrong and it's missed a lot of what I've talked about. In fact, I made a video about all the world's planned battery deployment storage projects. In fact, all the biggest ones coming up over the next decade. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to know about those projects. They're enormous. Actually, it really blew my mind some of the size of this, some of these projects. What I've seen for battery deployment projects planned in the United States suggests this report is has missed most of my video. And they should go back and watch it to find out what's going on in the United States because there are some enormous, astronomically large battery de deployment projects going on, which absolutely blew my mind when I learned about them. Now, residential storage, the researchers found, will also continue to surge, a trend already seen in states like California and Texas that have weathered recent power outages. Now, one key thing to remember, though, is that the price of battery storage will go down enormously over the next decade. Batteries have come down in price by about 89% over the last decade, but this coming decade will see declines in price. Probably we're looking at now a sell price of around about 100 US dollars per kilowatt. That will decline, in my view, based on all the research that I've done, to around 40 US dollars per kilowatt hour, meaning the price of battery storage will come down enormously and make the likelihood of adoption so much higher for millions and millions of people and states and countries. Now, overall behind the meter markets are expanding with 57 gigawatt hour of new deployments projected by 2030 as costs drop and more consumers purchase solar panels and electric vehicles. These numbers that they've been projecting here, I think they're just a fraction of what's really gonna happen. Companies like this that project these sorts of numbers are always wrong on the low side. Not on the high side, it's never on the high side. It's always on the low side. That includes the IAA, the International Energy Agency, which has been ludicrously wrong on price declines on solar and battery storage and on wind generation. Every single year, they've forecasted for prices to decrease, but the prices have decreased by at least 50% more than the International Energy Agency has forecasted. Earlier this week, IHS Marquette released a report predicting that annual global energy storage installations could top 20 gigawatt in 2024 and 30 gigawatt by 2030. It'll be much larger than that. However, the report warned that a limited supply of lithium ion batteries and competition with electric vehicle manufacturers could squeeze the market. Separately, the Energy Information Administration, the EIA, wrote in August that the combined capacity of US battery storage which increased by 28% in 2019, could grow by 10 times between 2021 and 2023 and could contribute to 10,000 megawatts to the grid. So the EIA, which is always wrong on the low side, says that the market will increase by 10 times between 2021 and 2023. What does that mean for companies who make batteries? Well, you do the math. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? Increasing focus on the energy transition as a way of stimulating green growth has led to a flood of ambitious energy storage targets announced by governments globally, said George Hilton, an IHS Marquis Senior Analyst for Clean Energy Technology in a statement. This has significantly strengthened our outlook for the industry as it becomes poised to start a prolonged period of strong growth through to 2030. The Asia-Pacific market will also account for substantial growth in the next decade with projections that the region could grow 20-fold and reach 400 gigawatt hours of total storage capacity by 2030. I believe that figure will be more like 900 gigawatt hours. China alone will see FTM storage installations, installations more than triple in 2021 and provide 260 gigawatt hours of new capacity by the end of the decade. Europe will also see significant demand with cumulative installations projected by top to top 100 gigawatt hours by 2030 with Germany and Italy accounting for most of the growth. Now, some of this report is confusing because it's re referencing battery storage projects at the grid level, and some of it's referencing simply storage projects at the household level. So people buying batteries for their own house versus energy companies buying the batteries or governments buying batteries. Two different things, well, in fact, three different things. It's confusing, but in essence, the battery market has exploded this year compared to last year. 
It's up three times greater than what it was last year in terms of battery deployment. But prices are still expensive. One of the key reasons prices are still expensive is because most of this battery deployment and storage hasn't been with lithium iron phosphate batteries or with or with sodium batteries, which I believe are actually the future of energy storage. I made a video about that. It's actually one of my most popular videos. I'll put a link in the description below to the sodium batteries that CATL, the world's, world's largest battery manufacturer, are working on right now, which believe, they believe will bring the cost down by at least 30%. That's versus lithium ion phosphate batteries, which are already much cheaper than most of the world's current energy storage, which is either NCA or NCM chemistries. So in other words, next over the next few years, we're going to see a massive increase in deployment of lithium ion phosphate batteries. This will bring the price down of energy storage by at least 40% over the next one to two years. Then by 2024, 2025, we're going to see massive deployment in energy storage projects of sodium batteries. This will bring the price down again significantly. You can imagine the enormous increase in demand for households, for businesses, for governments, for energy, actual energy companies. Demand for these batteries is going to go up three times this year, three times again next year. You can see the compounding going on here. This is an enormous potential here to make, well, to make money, really, and to prove. And ultimately, the great thing about this news is, well, you can invest in these projects. You can invest in these companies. You can invest in battery companies, you can invest in Tesla and BYD and CATL, in LG Energy Solutions, in Samsung, in a range of different businesses that are going to profit from this, basically this new world order in a way. The other thing is, remember, all of this is making the world a better place. It's reducing our carbon emissions. And by, well, not long from now, probably 10 to 15 years, most of the world's energy, in my view, will be renewable. That is simply based on cost. It's so much cheaper to install renewables now than it is to build a new coal plant or even to operate existing plants. Thanks for watching the video. Thanks for your support. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking. Stay awesome. Have a great day. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.